All right. If you um, have are just joining us, my name is Roxy Deer. I'm the director of Wayne County. I'm a director of professional development for the Wayne County Area Chamber of Commerce, and this is this month's business education luncheon. So many of us are jumping in on Zoom today, or all of us are, I should say. Thank you for joining us. If you're unfamiliar with Zoom, we are going to ask that you use your um, toolbar in the bottom of your screen and mute yourself. You can leave your camera on. Um, there is a chat box option as well. Please feel free to add any comments, questions you may have for panelists in the chat box, and I will oversee that chat box throughout the day. I see a few of you dropping good mornings and hellos in there. Go ahead and tell everyone hello and where you're working from today. If you're at home, or if you're at the office, um, let us know in the chat box. <clears throat> Later in today's presentation, there will be a poll question that pops up. Um, you will have access to um, answer that poll question right on your computer. It is anonymous um, for that, but just be prepared for that. All right. A few updates from the Chamber. Our golf tournament has been rescheduled from early June to late July now. Registration for our partners will open tomorrow and um, open registration will be later in July. If you've never been to this tournament, it's a great day on the course. If you're interested in sponsoring, there's opportunities to be on the golf course that day to meet everyone. Um, we expect over 48 teams that day. So it is one of the largest tournaments in the county and, and in a great way to promote your business. We could not do these luncheons without thanking our sponsors. First Merchants Bank is our largest sponsor for business ed luncheons and we're so excited to have them here today. Um, and we're thankful for their support throughout the year for these events. Okay. I wanna introduce our panelists. Um, three of them are here today and one will be joining us um, with pre-recordings and that is Stacy Atkinson. She is the Chancellor at Ivy Tech Richmond. Unfortunately, like I said, she could not be here today but she has sent pre-recordings pre in on her topic and we're really excited to hear from her today. Our next panelist is Peggy Sinova from the Eastern Indiana Small Business Development Center. Peggy, do you wanna say anything about yourself? Well, I'm just excited to be here and uh, talk about all these new adventures we've had working from home. Thank you, Peggy. Next up is Laura Lee Heights from Stratavice Consulting. Laura Lee, would you like to say anything? I, I will uh, concur with um, Peggy that I'm excited to be here and thank you for inviting me. Thanks for joining us. And last but not least is Allison Zeidel, who's actually joining us, um, not from Wayne County right now, but Allison is um, in, involved in lots of philanthropic work in our community um, and works from home full time. So Allison, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, I'm Allison Zeidel. I'm a nonprofit consultant and also work for the Stam Coastline Family Foundation. And ironically, the rest of the panelists know, but about an hour ago, a landscaping business pulled up uh, next door and has been mowing and blowing leaves and everything. And this is the best Wi-Fi wi spot I have. So we're all in this together. This is, <laughs> this is classic working from home. So thank you for being patient. Perfect. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started with a quick video from Stacy. I'm sure if she was on this, she would be mortified about this still shot from this video, but we're going to go ahead and push play. Hi, everyone. My name is Stacy Atkinson, and I have the honor of serving as chancellor for the Ivy Tech Richmond campus. Um, much of what we did was turned upside down on a Tuesday afternoon when we announced we were closing on a Friday, March the 20th. Um, I remember that date because it was a really sad day in the neighborhood. It took lots of readjusting and it took lots of work to get to where we are today, but uh, week 14, I can tell you that we've all sort of gotten into a routine and we've learned every single week what works best for us. There are two things that I shared with Roxy that worked for me and that I hope to share with you. I've shared them with the entire campus in helps that the focus on taking care of you is the predominant uh, thing that they're moving forward. We have jobs to do. In our case, we have students to serve. Um, but we need to take care of ourselves. In a lot of cases, we became homeschool teachers at night if we had elementary school teachers, sorry, elementary school children. We became remote employees and some of us having never worked remotely ever. So 
they were just a lot of things that we had to learn with time. So the first one that I will tell you about that really helped me personally um, was moving your body, right? So this didn't entail a really uh, strenuous workout where people were sweating, and although I encourage you if that's your thing, but if not, it was just moving a little bit. Some of us you know, live in places where all of a sudden we weren't seeing people and coworkers the way that we were on a normal basis when we were at work and in actual office settings. So the ability to get up from your desk and walk around or get up and walk to a conference room or get up and just move about, it didn't happen. We were all of a sudden sort of in this cave and in this, what I call the cage of the four walls. And you were sort of in your house and it, it was it. Like, there wasn't very much else to do. And there really weren't people to talk to. So it was, it, you had to be very intentional about actually moving your body. All right, we are going to move to the next slide, if it will let me. Technology, I'm telling you. Escape key. There we go. Thanks, Lortley. All right, Allison. Yeah, so um, we're going to hear from Stacy in just a second about setting up your workspace, but this is one that was really important to me. I left Cope Environmental Center on April 14th, and I remember the day very well. Um, and I believe April 15th, my mom and I went out on a shopping trip to get stuff to set up my workspace. Um, I can't, I uh, needed a place to call home for my office. And I have a two, a two location method. So I like having one spot that's a separate room. Some houses you can do that in, I get it. Some you need more of a corner and that, that's okay. And then the second one is a more central location. I'm a mom, I have um, a 13 year old and a nine year old. And so I needed the flexibility of when I was doing really, uh, whether it's grant proposal writing or something where I had to really be focused, I needed to be in that separate room. But if I'm answering emails or doing some things that I can have a little more flexibility and not turn off the kids' communication, then I had a second location, which was my kitchen table. And those were my two kind of office locations. And I really recommend that, especially for people who don't need complete silence all the time, which is my personality. Um, that method worked really well for us, but I think we'll listen to Stacy and hear a couple more of her tidbits about how her locations and setups worked. Great. The other thing that I learned, and not from my own experience, but I would be on Zoom meetings and people would be sitting on all sorts of chairs. And you would hear them about week three or week four say, oh my gosh, this bar stool or this kitchen chair or this dining room chair is just not working for me. So all of a sudden they became office chairs, right? Dining room chairs and your kids were in the home office or you don't have a home office or your kids were in the place where it was most likely or you and your spouse were both working from home and it was the great debate of whose conference call is more important and whose conference call is more high stakes. Um, so we all were sitting on very uncomfortable chairs to begin with. So that was the first thing that we learned. Um, for the first three weeks, if you were ever on a conference call with me, you saw that I was working from my guest room. Uh, guest room bed, by the way, which was not a very good look, but I had no motivation to get out of bed. I was in shock about what was happening to the world and that I was all of a sudden the teacher to a fourth grader and a kindergartner when truly I had no idea what that world was and somehow I was supposed to keep a full-time job and my spouse was an essential worker and went to work every single day. So it was like, yes, Stacy, you make, you now are the lunch lady, you are the custodial crew and you're also the teacher. And hey, by the way, you have a full-time job. So it, it was an interesting first three weeks, but I couldn't find comfort. My kids were working in the home office. So I was only comfortable in a guest room bed, which I somewhat recommend if it's the only comfort you have and absolutely don't recommend if you have the goal of moving your body. It was one of the things that I learned very quickly that when you lay in bed all day, you just want to nap. So it was very difficult to be a professional and be a teacher, custodian, and lunch person uh, right in the same day. So that was difficult. Allison? Yeah, so um, that spot one, which is kind of the permanent location um, that I set up, there are some kind of tricks of the trade that you can use for that. One of them that's really important that a lot of people don't think about, 
And I think my mom's watching this webinar right now, but she has files in like 10 different places in the house and somehow she can operate that way. I discovered very quickly that I could not have my office materials spread out. And um, so sometimes you have to make the leap to buy some appropriate storage equipment for you to have all of your materials in one place in one room. Um, that was something that slowed me down a lot in the beginning. I'm going to this room for this. I'm going to this filing cabinet over here for that. Pulling it all together in one room was really, really important. We had to buy a, a, a system to be able to do that. Having a strong, strong internet signal is really important too. I've battled it out with internet companies at home to figure out where I can get the strongest signal. Good lighting, and we are all gonna mention the chair thing because it could not be more important. A comfortable chair. I bought one that was only $70, but insanely comfortable. I use it all the time. It's a great chair, and it is not that hard kitchen table type of chair that you would normally uh, use. I'm, um, I was an art major in college, and so having pleasing decor and art around me was really important as well. Um, but the most important thing, I think, on this entire list for me was that it was recognizable as an office. And it had either a, a door or a curtain. Mine had walls that it used, very obviously you have to walk into a room. Mine is a former dining room, so you had to walk into this room. I have an eight-year-old, uh, or he's now nine, but um, the first time I started working from home, he was a six-year-old. And I had to have some kind of a space where when he entered, it was clear, this is my space, you can't be in here. And I actually used the tax reason as my, as my excuse for my kids. IRS says you can't be in this room. This is a single use room. You're not allowed to come in here. Um, and actually it worked pretty well. Now it's harder on a, obviously a six year old or a nine year old than it is on my 13 year old. She understood it really well. But having that recognizable space is really, really important in that main room. So that's why I say welcome to my room, now get out. That was a really important feature for me. So you can go to the next slide, Roxy. Um, establishing a schedule. So my number one tip, um, I think the first thing when Roxy said we would be doing this seminar that popped into my head was accepting realities. And the next two slides are going to deal with that. Um, so I made a list of my realities in my head uh, of what I've been dealing with over the last three years of working from home. Here are my realities. So I hate mornings. Everyone that knows me knows I hate mornings. I'm a horrible morning person and you would never schedule a meeting with me at 730 in the morning because I'm useless. Um, my children's sweet sleep schedule during the summer and during quarantine has been wonky, so that came into play. Cleanliness. Uh, my husband would laugh that that is on my realities list, but it is. Cleanliness, and we'll deal with that in a second. A fluctuating schedule. Since I'm a nonprofit consultant, I have eight clients, and I have a schedule that's very wonky and not predictable. And then I'm a list maker. So if we go on to that next slide, Roxy, we're going to deal with these realities here. So you build your schedule around your realities. Um, it would be lovely to say that now that I work from home, I'm going to change who I am and I'm going to all of a sudden get up at 5 a.m. and work out and then I'm going to do all these things and I'm going to build in, a, this is going to be a new me. There are a lot of reasons it's a new me, but mornings are not one of them. And I had to learn to accept my reality on that one. So when the kids are at school, I accepted that my day started, you know, at 7.30, but my, my working day started at about 9.30, okay, because I was taking them to school. Don't expect more from yourself than you can deliver because you are actually expecting a lot by making the transition home. A lot of people think it's just easy breezy to work from home. It's, it's hard. You have to be very disciplined as you're finding. Um, children's sleep schedules, certainly during COVID and summer, um, I fought the first couple of weeks of COVID. Maybe other parents felt this way. I was trying to get the kids up at 830. We're starting early. And then I thought, this is stupid. My kids sleep till 10. We are going to start our, our school day at 11. And accept that reality, change your schedule accordingly, and move on with it. And I got three hours out of my day, which was great. Um, this is the third one's a really important one that took me a year to accept. The first hour of my day, I end up resetting the house and just making sure that my environment, my office, the kitchen where I'm in very often is at least picked up. Otherwise, in the back of my head, there are all these wonderful distractions. Doing dishes can be a really great distraction for calling that person that you have to deliver bad news to or something. So setting the house the first hour of the day was always really important to me. When I worked full time in an office, I was able to get away from that. At home, you're not able to get away from that. So giving myself permission to do that was really, really important. Um, and a fluctuating schedule. So 
I always attempt to make Fridays my day to tie up loose ends. And I know a lot of other home workers, the uh, people that work from home that do the same thing. Um, you are getting more and more nervous as the week progresses that your weekend is just going to be nailed by all kinds of work that you don't have time to get done and also take care of family and do things that you enjoy doing. So not scheduling a ton of things on Friday was really important and still continues to be really important. So that way I can kind of sweep any of those extra things that I didn't get done during the week onto Friday and hammer it out really easily, which is great. Um, on Sunday night, I always look at my schedule for the week. I think Peggy has a method for doing this as well. I look at the schedule for the week. I figure out exactly what my appointments are that week. And then I take my tasks, I list them out, and I put Monday, Tuesday, whatever next to them. I put one hard kind of really thinking type task on each day and then a couple tasks that are like, you've got to send that email to that person that you keep forgetting to do. A couple of those in those days. If I can get ahead of schedule, great, that's wonderful. Um, so I kind of have those first and second priorities for my contracts um, and, or those that are really time sensitive and I do that that way. And I assign a couple low hanging fruit to each day. Um, the mental boost you get from checking those things off the list, as you know at work, it's the same at home, um, is really, really important. Can you go on to the next slide? Yeah. All right, so I think we'll um, listen to Stacy's perspective first on this one, if that's okay, Roxy. Um, so we have all these watch indicators, right? So I would get on a campus Zoom with my campus and we all had these watches, right? So maybe it was an Apple watch, maybe Android is your pick, maybe Fitbit is your poison, whatever, whatever, pick your poison, that's the case. But we all have these and it, it makes me laugh because we all get a reminder in the middle of meetings and it tells us usually to stand. Nobody moves. So I thought, man, I used to look at my steps and be like, wow, I worked a great, I walked a grand total of 570 steps today. <laughs> so I would get out and walk around my neighborhood or I would just go to the mailbox. If that's all I could squeeze in, just go to the mailbox. But just moving out of the house that became a cage or the cage that became a house was really important to me from the beginning. Um, I used to tell my campus, if you, if getting up and going to the mailbox at the beginning, the weather wasn't so great. Uh, so it was kind of difficult to give people this advice, but I just wanted them not to be in the same space that they were taking all of these zooms all day long. Do you want to play the other video? Yeah, go ahead for the second one too. Um, and then the last thing would, oh, sorry. <laughs> There we go. Um, and then the last thing, which really, really, really helped someone like me and someone with my personality was put stuff on the calendar. So anyone that goes on my calendar and I warn my team like, hey guys, you're gonna see some real funky stuff come on my calendar in the next couple of weeks while I get through this quarantine thing. I had a uh, reminder to wake up, I still have them. I had a reminder to get moving is what I called it. I had a workout reminder, so I carved you know, an hour, sometimes it was before work started, sometimes it was lunchtime, and sometimes it was after work was over, just sort of depended on your day. I had an eat lunch. I learned about week five, maybe, that I wasn't eating, that it was like lollipop after lollipop and trail mix and Lay's potato chips. And if you know anything about me, Oreos, um, I've tried every flavor of Oreos. So if you need a recommendation, call me. Every single week, I would go to Target and pick up a different kind of Oreo. I'm not very proud of it, but I'm also not very regretful, you guys. The tiramisu Oreos are the best, but I would never have a substantial meal. And I put lunch on my calendar to whatever, it says whatever you're doing, make sure you stop and eat lunch. Um, and then this one was really interesting. I learned very quickly that it was 8.30 at night um, and I was still on the laptop and I was still doing things during the day. I didn't have the boundary of actually shutting down. If something came in, I did it. So I remember one day looking over at the little clock on the laptop and it said 8.22 and I was like, PM? There's no way. 
And everything behind you, life just sort of kept on going and kept on moving, but I didn't have those boundaries. So at 5 p.m., there was a reminder on my calendar to start shutting down. Some days I'm really good about it, and some days I can, and, and just the nature of the day. Some days it'll go till 5.30 or 6, but it will never go to 8.22 p.m. again. I, I think that that's a disservice to many people. You weren't at the best of me at 8.22 p.m., I can guarantee you that. So put on your calendar so that you have some accountability and so that you make sure that you're doing those things. And for me, the priority things were getting up and getting moving. And that was a product of being in bed for three weeks and sort of just leaning over, grabbing the laptop, starting my day in that way. I knew that that wasn't very good for my mental health. Uh, so get moving, a workout, um, lunch, and shutting down at the end of the day. So, but I do recommend moving your body, whether it's just, just get out of your space or it all just becomes the same. You're eating, you're talking on the phone, you're on a laptop, you're doing your thing at home and you are literally in the same space. So be careful with that. All right. Um, and then the last thing, which really, really, really. <laughs> all right, Allison. No worries. Um, so turning off is important and Stacy talked about that. I think the, the most important thing though is also honoring your most efficient times. So I'm not a morning person. I do really well at about 11 p.m. I write grant proposals. I do all kinds of stuff at about 11 p.m. at night because that's kind of my on time. Um, but recognize that in yourself. And if you have a three to seven window where um, you can maybe take that off and you schedule something with the kids. I think it's really important, as she said, to schedule it into your, your, your calendar because if you say, I'm going to take the kids, we are going for ice cream at 4 p.m., we're going to Muddy Monkey, the kids are excited about it, you have to turn off that computer and go. And that is really, really important. So recognizing your most efficient times of day and then scheduling appropriately, I think is important. You can over schedule though. Um, Roxy and I, best time of day comes at 11 p.m. either. I, I, I agree and nobody's bothering you at that time too. Um, you can get a ton done working from home. You do not have the distractions of a lot of things going around. You can get so much done, but you can also set really unrealistic expectations for yourself. So if you look at that calendar for the week that I talked about with all of your things, your first and second priorities listed out, and you say, oh my gosh, like I'm a superhero if I can get all this done this week. That should be your signal that that is not possible. You have to then rewind a little bit and do some rearranging. So next slide, I think my last slide maybe. Okay, um, so if you find that you're slipping out of your schedule, what I've had to do before is kind of knock myself back into it. So a change of scenery is a great way to do that. During COVID, it's a little different. Um, you, you might have to kind of play around with that a little bit, but I um, got a co-working space at the Innovation Center, which I just knew I had and I could use whenever I wanted, but then also go to the coffee shop. Um, if I did that and said, okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm at one of those other locations, it kind of knocks me back into my schedule. I'm a big fan though of if you are working from coffee shops, I think every two hours you should buy something. So I'm just going to put that little plug in there. <laughs> this is the Chamber of Commerce, right? I think we should be supporting that. So um, last but not least, just COVID kind of blew schedule to the bits, but um, and no one has the same work life or, or priorities. Um, and working from home can give you the flexibility to distribute that differently, which I think is really important. So taking advantage of it by um, going when you're the most efficient, I think is important. But also remember that putting things off can cause a lot of anxiety and Peggy's gonna tackle that later. So on to the next. All right, thank you, Allison. Now we're going to hear from Peggy about working from home and some quick ideas that you can do. Yes, and I think you'll find that many of them are repeat ideas, but that means that they're important to all of us. So there you go. I'm ready for my first slide. So we've already talked about when to work and when to call it a day. And I think Stacy's got some more to say about that. The other thing that I found super important was to schedule non-work activities. So most of us deal in a world where we're in control of what happens next. Um, and we're just guilty of, you know, I'm guilty of telling people on the campus, well, I'll just put on my calendar. I just do whatever my calendar tells me to do. So I feel like I was sort of a puppet to the calendar and, and that's good and bad, um, but I wasn't being very cautious about what was happening on my calendar. I was thinking that, you know, I'm saving commute time, I'm saving get ready time, I'm saving put makeup on time, I'm saving straightening my hair time. 
we might as well just have Zooms. And I just would look at my calendar in that morning and just look for a start and end date at end time. So I'm going to start at this time and I'm going to end at this time. But I wasn't looking in between and it was Zoom after Zoom after Zoom after Zoom after Zoom. And while I think Zoom is a great product, and while there are some things about Zoom that I hope we take on into life post COVID-19, like turning on our cameras, I don't believe that it is beneficial to anybody if you are Zoom after Zoom after Zoom after Zoom. Some of them were like four hour Zoom calls. And I'm not sure what we were thinking. We were scheduling them, we were participating in them. I, I don't think they were productive. At least they weren't for me um, at all. And I remember about week six, I finally just crashed. And I was in a Zoom that was four hours long and I was like, oh, oh something's happening. So I shut my video off. I messaged the owner of that meeting and I said, I'm here. I just can't be on anymore. I just can't have the video camera looking at me anymore. If I need to wander for 30 seconds, I need to do that without thinking that 25 people are watching me wander. I would be very mindful of how you schedule. And I told my team this. I was like, I know that we think that we can go eight to five and go Zoom after Zoom after Zoom. It is just not a really great idea. So again, back to my calendar point, I would break it up as much as you can. Schedule some away time, right? Block some time where you are not going to be in this cage of a home, a home office or wherever you're working from and schedule some time to just go away. And sometimes that's on your front porch. Sometimes that's taking a walk. Sometimes that's going from the home office for me to the living room. And it's just a different scenery and a different space. And you'll be surprised how much that changes your outlook and your perspective and how re-energized you are for your next meeting. So, and schedule some time where you're doing non-work activities. And some of them can be really silly. You know, I just remember like my kids had this lanyard kit and I remember just sitting down and just doing lanyards with them. It was, it was brain numbing where you didn't really, you know, I would leave brain numbed and go there and then you didn't have to think about anything anymore. So if, if you need 30 minutes to watch a sitcom or watch something on Netflix, I know we're all really tired of Netflix, but if it just meant being away, I highly, highly recommend that. I would say non-work activities, moving my body and putting things on my calendar are the only way that we have made it in my home and in my life to week 14 or whatever week we're in or whatever day of the week it is or whatever time of day it is. So I wish you all well. I hope that you are all staying safe and staying cautious. Um, let's connect together, but please don't put another Zoom on my calendar. Good luck. Thanks. I really like what she said. that I found super important was to schedule. Sorry about that, Peggy. Oh, no worries. I, I, I picked up on something that Stacy said, and I've been using it with people I work with, the cage of the four walls and just the idea of getting up and doing something and setting expectations for others that you share your space with. That That's just really um, important for us all to do right now during this kind of strange time. Uh, my next... My next um, slide talks about a uh, schedule that a really overscheduled woman put on Pinterest, but I'm sure that it works for her. It doesn't always work for everyone, but if you need a schedule and you can put it up and figure out when you can work around what your kids are doing or what else is going on in your life, by all means, use that schedule. I'm ready for the next one. So get up early before the rest of the house. Now that's me. I'm not sure that everyone and Allison obviously isn't that person who wants to get up early, but whatever works for you. You can work late out after the rest of the house is asleep and you can figure out what works best for you. Um, I see Allison said she did a different schedule every week. That's probably a good thing to do. Uh, just figure it out and move forward. My schedule is, um, to get up early and I just get ready like I'm going to work. I know maybe that's just a quirk for me, but I get up, do my exercise, prepare to go to work. Now I will tell you that I have worn a lot of yoga pants and I warn you when you put those button pants back on, they might have shrunk. Be careful with that. But if you have a plan, it just really helps to know what's gonna go on day to day, week to week. Okay, Roxy. I love that idea of the tax thing, Allison, but I read this where if you have kids, you can actually make them, have them make these signs for you. It might mean more to them, stop and go. When you're on a Zoom call and you really don't wanna be in, 
interrupted, having that stop sign up might help and having the go is always helpful when you got kids that want some loving. I actually saw uh, an article about if your kid is bothering you during a Zoom call, to just try to give them a hug and let them know everything's okay because we are all in this together and everyone that has kids knows that it's not always able, you're not always able to get that stop sign up and have it work. So the next idea is to ask for what you need. You may need a monitor, you may need a different keyboard, um, but you will need a great chair. Have you noticed that all of us have, have been talking about chairs? I think that that's probably the biggest tip we've got here today is it's repeating for importance. Make sure you have a chair that supports you. And then you need to over communicate to make sure that your team knows what's going on and that everybody's talking uh, with one another, e either in a Zoom. And I really like the idea of doing just phone call meetings sometimes because those Zooms can be really debilitating almost. If, you, if you've had a four hour one, you know what I'm talking about. So just make sure that you have a circle of support, that you have people in your life that you can maybe complain to about all this or just commiserate and let them know that you love them and, and that, that that support is really well received. And then in conclusion, don't be too hard on yourself. Reach out when you need help. Take a sick day if you need one. I know that some people don't even do that because they're working at home anyway. But if you need to get away from the office, get away from your office at home. Celebrate your small victories. And remember, you're not, you're not alone with this. We're all going through this together. And give yourself the grace you need. Be gentle with yourself. You're doing the best you can. That's what I've got for that. Thank you, Peggy. Now we're going to open up the polls. Let's see. You will see the poll pop up on your screen. Um, give, go ahead and take a few seconds to answer that. It is a multiple choice if you have multiple answers. I think the bottom one is, I thought I was on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got about half of you in there. We'll wait, uh, about 65% of the votes are in. We'll give it just another uh, 50 seconds or so, a little less than a minute. Um, oh, we're almost to 100%. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. And some of you might be on the phone too, so you might not be able to do it if you dialed in. All right. Okay, we'll end our polling um, right there. So, um, internet went out at the worst time is our big winner, and um, I could not agree more. Uh, I have had that happen, big presentations. And I used to um, have this running joke um, that I was on internet and it was ran by the hamster wheel. And I was like, come on little hamster, just a little bit faster, faster, faster. Um, because it was notorious for my internet to be slow out um, in the country. And it never failed a big storm. I'm doing a presentation, boom, the internet goes out at the very worst time. So I completely understand. So let's talk a little bit about um, technology for a minute. Um, so I am, um, I'm a work from home veteran. I've done it for almost 20 years and I've been through everything you can think of. The dogs barking, kids running in, trash man coming, making big sounds, the internet going out, your computer crashing, uh, taking conference calls from every possible um, place. I've worked um, in different locations for a period of time, uh, spent some time in Costa Rica while uh, working um, for about a month. So um, I, I feel like I have uh, run the gamut for, uh, for working from home. And so I wanna share some technology tips, um, whether you're a beginner and this was the first time you had an opportunity, maybe you've been doing it for a little while and you're still finding your footing, or maybe you've been a veteran too, and I wanna share some more advanced um, technology tips. So hopefully I have something for everyone um, in here. The first thing I wanna talk about is don't force people to use a Maserati when a Ford Focus will do. So think about the audience and the technology. You know, if you're working with somebody and you're going to host um, maybe more of a presentation like we're doing today, and you know the audience really, really well, 
Um, choose the technologies that's the right fit. If they're not really experienced, um, maybe it's not a great um, time to use the software Mural, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, maybe a conference call will do. And so just think about the audience, what's the right technology, and don't go for um, a, uh, you know, something really fancy if it's just not needed. The, um, the second thing I would say is always begin with the end in mind. Um, I think you're actually gonna hear that more than once today, um, but it is absolutely my motto. I always try to envision um, or build a mental model of what I want something to look like at the end. And we try to build um, out the purpose or the goal of the technology you want to use. So just because somebody else is using it doesn't mean it's the right fit for that particular meeting or that call or uh, what you hope the group gets out of it. So just think about what is the purpose and begin with that end in mind and find the right fit technology. And I'm going to share some things with you today. Um, the second, or the third thing is nobody wants to practice in front of people you don't know. Um, you know, you, you go to a play, they've practiced before they get to the audience. So if you're new to the software, um, you know, don't, don't, you know, take it the first spin out in front of people you don't know, and then you're scrambling to try to figure out how to use it. So experiment in a safe space. I was just on a call with um, uh, my cousin last week, and uh, I was talking about shifting over to Microsoft Teams, and then I needed to practice the software multiple times as I, if I decide to move away from Zoom and use Teams, I want to practice in a safe environment um, and not, not take my first time in front of people I don't know or barely know. Um, the next one's internal versus external. And so this really depends on the business that you're in and, and how you serve or work uh, remote. So um, if not all software loves to play with each other nicely. And so if you're all, if you're working with your teammates and they're all within the same location, um, you have the same software, it's much easier to say, I'm going to schedule, maybe your meetings happen um, through a Microsoft platform. Maybe you're using Microsoft Teams. And um, if you're working external, Microsoft doesn't always play nice um, externally. And so maybe you're better to use a Google platform or a Zoom platform or something else that doesn't care what the user is using, whether it's a PC or an Apple. So just think about those things um, as you're scheduling or setting things up, especially if you work a lot with external and you do some things with internal, you gotta find something that will, will flow between both. And um, test out new technology ahead of time. Um, and I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that and, and just some um, experiences I've had. Um, right on to the next thing. So let's start first with the uh, technology map up, so our uh, matchup. So um, I think Stacy said it um, really, really well that we're exhausted from having meetings, um, just exhausted. Um, some of us, and I saw multiple times, people said um, that they work all the time. And um, some people will schedule, and I love how they uh, both peg, everybody's touched on schedule. Um, don't block that time after time after time after time because you get no downtime. Matter of fact, we were on a call the other day. Oh, it was Allison. And she said um, that she schedules 30 minutes after a call so she can quickly do whatever the takeaways are, if possible, in that 30 minutes. And that just gives you breathing time or downtime before your next call. But sometimes we don't have to have a meeting at all. And so an example might be, um, if you'll click for me, Roxy, an example might be a project update. You, you don't need necessarily to have a call. So what are some um, systems that you can use to try to uh, give progress um, on a project without jumping onto a, 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 a Zoom or having a meeting? And so some of that software could be um, uh, Monday, uh, monday.com. Oh, you can click a couple times. Um, monday.com um, is some software that I have personally used and I am actually using it with a, a partner organization now. Um, and it transcends, doesn't matter if you're on Apple or PC, um, it's, it's um, uh, online software. So it makes it easy. Asana, um, I've used that for a number of years. And then Rike, I've not used before, um, but the idea is that they're all project management software and I can see what everybody's doing without actually having to pull people together for a call because we're all so sick of being on calls after call after call. Um, or I should say Zoom after Zoom after Zoom. And in these, these meetings happening with Zoom, we have Zoom fatigue. And so maybe um, if you can't just do it this way, maybe click that button for me, Roxy. 
um, maybe it is time to go old school a little bit and click one more time um, uh, and go with a conference call. And so I want to share some, a little tip with you. Uh, go ahead and click one more time. We all have conference call um, uh, features or availability on our cell phones. So if there's just a few of you, um, you can, um, as people call in, you can merge the call and that's essentially a conference call. And so use your cell phone instead of trying to pull everybody got together on Zoom and then they're trying to figure it out. And, and sometimes people don't like Zoom because they want to take the they want to meet while they're in the car. A conference call works really, really well for that. So do it on your cell phone, make it simple. That's the Ford Focus model. If you need to get a little bit better, or you've got more people, maybe you want to do something else, try the free conference call.com. Um, it's truly free and you can record the calls and um, I've used it for years and um, it's a great way to pull people together and not have them on screen. All right, um, let's keep, so I got I want to pause there really quick um, and ask, I want to open it up and just ask questions. Um, does anybody um, have any preferred project management software they really like before we move on? Or you could put it chat. I don't want you to feel like you have to just sit there. Any, any recommendations of software? Ed De La Paz, maybe? Anybody else? Trello, oh no, not Trello, no. <laughs> oh no, no, Trello is my arch enemy. Um, I've used almost everything, Ed says. Um, Trello, uh, it's funny, I was on a call last week with a, a partner organization. We we're talking about Basecamp or you know, just some different collaboration software. And um, she, she said, well, I don't like Basecamp, so it's off the list. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I said, but I don't like Trello, so it's off the list. So um, yeah, there's a lot of smart sheet um, is, a, is more intense than some of the others. So there's a lot of different um, software out there. Find something that will work for you and your organization, and now's a good opportunity to try something new. So I want to go to some of the beginners that may be on the call that have not used Zoom technology for more than just calling in and you might be a little nervous about scheduling your own. So Zoom does offer, they did offer a free version. Um, it's limited uh, time that's allowed um, and limited to the number of meetings you can have. But if you are, maybe you're with a nonprofit and you don't need it very often, um, you don't need long meetings, this is a good opportunity. And so I want to share with you, get to know the technology. So <laughs> many years ago, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, so I'm actually thinking about it. Several years ago, um, when I was in corporate America, we were on a conference call and there were a lot of us. And um, I don't remember what the topic was, but I do remember this. And all of a sudden this guy starts snoring and the poor host had no idea how to mute the line. And if you think it can't get worse because somebody's snoring, oh, it got worse. Somebody put the call on hold and there's a message that, that played in the background because there was a corporate office. There was like this message. So not only are we listening to the, the, the hold message, but we were also listening to this guy's store. Like nobody can pay attention to that because they didn't know the technology. They didn't know what to push to, to get to mute all lines. So please know your technology um, before you get on. Um, if you've not logged on to, if you use Zoom and you've not logged on to review your user settings, please do. Um, user management, go to room management, and then definitely go to account management, account settings. You can actually set yours to not come in on video, because I know a lot of people do not like coming in on video, and then they're scrambling to figure out how the heck to turn the video off. Um, you can go into your account settings and just set that it automatically, whenever you log in, it, it turns your video off. You can also, that's where you could turn on your waiting room. Um, there's a lot of features inside of there. So if you've not done that, take time to do that. Um, also find ways to engage with your audience. And so we popped up a poll. Um, we popped up a poll and allowed you to engage and interact with us. I asked the question and asked you to answer on chat. Um, it's really hard, extremely hard sometimes to get engagement on this, but um, that, uh, that's why they built some tools to try to help you do that. Reactions is another one. So sometimes I'll say, you know, uh, am I right about that? You know, give me a clapping hand and a clapping hand is through the reactions and you can go in and click the clapping hand and we know that you're engaging um, and, and part of the conversation. Um, another um, option is the breakout rooms. If you've not done that, you can break out your groups and allow them to work um, in much smaller groups of people. So use some of this um, technology within Zoom 
and uh, Teams um, offers it. And if you're on WebEx, they have um, similar type features. So, and no matter what software you're using, many of them have these similar features. Record your sessions, but do it to your local drive. You're gonna be very limited on your cloud options. So if, if you have a lot of space, like a terabyte of space on your local drive, I always recommend that. And then share only by the software, um, or share only what you wanna share. You can share by software, not by screen. And so when, when you go to share, you can choose to only share um, you know, the Google Slides instead, or uh, uh, Chrome instead of everything. Now, Laura Lee, why would I wanna do that? Well, um, I've been on calls before that really embarrassing um, emails came flowing in and they do that little preview at the bottom right hand corner. And maybe one of those emails might have been talking about one of my participants that were in the meeting and it did not go over well. So uh, lesson learned, um, you, you, you might wanna shut everything else off if you're gonna share your screen or just share by software. So rolling on, anybody else have anything embarrassing happen like that before? Tell me, and um, I'm usually communicating with one person about one project. So, so phone and email works fine, perfect, but I wanna agree it's vital to make regular progress reports. Yes, and that could be done, um, Luis, in, a, uh, in an Excel spreadsheet or a OneDoc or just via email. There's a lot of uh, ways to do that. Allison uses Wave Accounting, I started, um, uh, my business on wave two it's super inexpensive and um, it's uh, it's a great software um, a software to use if you're an independent person um, so good call out on that one chat and zoom is recorded even private chats don't use it for anything that's not for that zoom call and perfect perfect comment thank you thank you thank you yes um, I learned that the hard way with the private chats because um, there were some inappropriate comments going back and forth and it was on one that I'd recorded and um, it was, did not end up going out. So if you did not write anything down, write down Anne's um, note there because uh, she's spot on. So I'm gonna keep us moving along. Technology matchup, um, so what the group needs, and this is for more advanced um, home work, or working from home folks. So if you'll hit that um, go forward a couple times, if you need to collaborate and brainstorm, I've got some software that um, I think that you would really, uh, really be helpful. So the first one is, I mentioned it before, um, the breakouts. Um, so many people know about that, but I wanna talk to you a little bit about Mural, and that's the image you see on the left-hand side over there. Um, I am a facilitator um, uh, by trade, and so collaboration is very important, and we're used to being able to use Post-it notes. Um, I've used Mural for several years now. It was designed um, by facilitators for facilitators. A lot of uh, visual practitioners um, or my colleagues utilize uh, the Mural software. It's got a ton of templates in it, but it's really perfect if you want to try to brainstorm and you want to give people a collaborative software to go out and use. Uh, Roxy, you had a chance to use it for the first time. Do you want to give any thoughts or opinions on it? I was a little intimidated when you first showed it in the meeting but then using it i was so impressed it felt like we were actually in a room we had like the big flow chart paper up and we were using our post-it notes and it became really easy and very like in a matter of minutes i felt comfortable with the program perfect and so that's that maserati versus ford focus if you're not sure your folks are ready for that type of technology a google doc will be okay too you could do a breakout, you give them a link to a Google Doc and, they're, and somebody's a scribe and they're writing right there. Another option is uh, Stormboard. Um, it's a competitor to Mural. It's a Microsoft owned product. It works really, really well with Microsoft products. So a Teams, Mural works across platforms. So um, hopefully for those veterans out there, maybe you've not heard of Mural or Stormboard and I'm happy to answer any questions with Mural or show you my Mural. And, um, and how I work with uh, or use it with clients. Um, but it's great for uh, team building, storm, uh, our brainstorming collaborative co collaboration. All right, let's move right along. The last thing I wanna talk about is uh, your working from home technology. So test your internet speed. Um, we, it is unreal to me the amount of, um, that we pay um, that for internet that we actually are not getting. So you should be testing your upload and download speeds. I've given you a link uh, right there, and I think these presentations are going to go out. Um, the link right there, um, uh, you could test your 
uh, upload and download speed and then call your internet service provider and see what you're paying for and make sure that what you're paying for is what you're getting. Dual monitors, I have dual monitors right here. That's why you see me turn my head because I can see what's going on in the chat. Um, this is if you're going to be permanently working from home or working from home for a long period of time, get your headset, get a microphone, get your dual monitors, have ergonomic chair, keyboard, mouse, um, set yourself up for success by doing these things if you're going to be in it for the long haul. Um, some other software um, that's great, uh, instant message software, so Microsoft Teams um, or Slack, it, again, depends on your organization. Mastering tasks, um, I'm a big OneNote user. Um, anybody that's worked with me at all, they, they know I use OneNote, they can see it on my screen, taking notes. Um, I, I love it. Um, I hate Trello, but a lot of people do love Trello. Um, the last thing I, I'll share is more for our veterans. Um, so if you are having challenges, you're used to being able to get up and go to uh, your technology guy's desk or girl's desk and say, hey, I need help with technology. Or you're used to walking down and saying, hey, I want to show you something on my screen. And then you can't all of a sudden do that. And so I love Loom, L-O-O-M. It's free and you can record your desktop. I use it often to show my assistant or um, the folks that manage my social, what I'm looking for. I use it with my tech guy. Every time I have a tech problem, I just pop that little loom on, on my Chrome, um, Chrome toolbar, and I, uh, I take a uh, video of what I'm doing with the problems I'm having, and I send that over to him, and I know when he's watched it. And so uh, loom is excellent, and it's free. So hopefully um, some of those tips are helpful to you. I will turn it over. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks, Arlene. Um, now we're going to turn it back over to Peggy, and she's going to talk a little bit about how, um, one, how she eats the frog and other organizational thoughts. All right, Peggy, you're, I'm going to unmute you. There I you think go. I'm here. Is okay. that good? I would say that's my, uh, that's my biggest technological mistake. I'm always trying to talk when you can't hear me. But I am also a professional procrastinator, so I'm just going to share some ideas. I think when we're working from home, sometimes it is easier not to be organized. So these are some tips and tricks that have helped me fight that procrastination, and I'm hoping that maybe they'll help you as well. So uh, we talked about eating a frog, and... Brian Tracy has written the book, Eat That Frog, and he actually has 21 things you can do to work towards eating your frog. But um, the three things that I kind of highlight here is uh, your frog, what is it? It's the worst thing you have to do to every day. And the one you're most likely to procrastinate on this. I think that that is definitely my um, stumbling block. I like to procrastinate, so I'm trying to eat that frog and always do the frog thing first. But I always go back to the oldie but goodie Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and he puts actions into four quadrants. Number one is important and urgent. Two is important, not urgent. Three is not important, but urgent. And four is not urgent, not, imp uh, not important, and not urgent. And how many of us sometimes get stuck in that number four. I know that sometimes uh, checking on email, looking at social media, just, just doing those things that are not important and they're not urgent can get us tripped up. So just being aware of those four quadrants and where you're working out of can be very valuable. I know it is to me. But what is eating a frog? Uh, eating a live frog first thing in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day is a quote that Mark Twain made a long time ago and I think it still pertains the day when you think about what can you do the first thing to make sure that that frog gets done. What is your frog? For me, sometimes it can be a crucial conversation, some phone call that you don't really want to make but you know you need to make. That can be your frog or another issue I have with organization and uh, plowing forward in general is to do things that I don't really know how to do or I'm not confident enough to do. So often my frog is trying to figure out a contract that I haven't quite read carefully. Just eating the thing that needs to be done the first thing every morning. And uh, these three things work for me. 
I plan the next day at the end of my current day. So I, I take time at the end of the day and write in, I use a bullet journal, you can use a digital planner, whatever you like, to write the three things that I wanna do the next day. Uh, I think I heard Laura Lee mention Asana. I found this one on the internet when I was getting ready for this. It was called Remember the Milk. I wanna look at that because that just sounds like a great title, doesn't it? Um, so determine what three actions can get you closer to your most important goal, and then figure out how you're gonna take those actions. So digitally or in writing, keep track of your day hour by hour, and that can help you get closer to your goal as well. So determine those three actions. And I don't know about you, but I have an endless to-do list. It just, it just goes on and on. But if you pick the three things that will get you closer to your main goals the night before, that can help you get started with the day. Choose the three because more, uh, because more can be overwhelming. If you, if you do more than three, that's great. But if you just write the three down and you can get to those, that's, that will keep you focused. So choose to do the first thing that might be your frog first on those three lists. Then um, I heard Allison say, that sometimes when she gets off track work, she goes to the coffee shop to get focused again. I think that if I feel like I'm not as um, disciplined as I should be during a day, I'll just, uh, print out my Outlook daily calendar and start recording hour by hour what I'm doing and then I can get back on track. You can do this digitally of course but somehow writing on paper is really good for me. It keeps me feeling in control and um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is my favorite quote which is, is this action taking me further from or closer to my goals? I kind of have that in the back of my mind all the, t all the time but Whatever you do to keep on track, just continue to do it. And before long, you will have eaten a lot of frogs and, and you'll like the aftertaste. I am uh, hoping that your day is more disciplined and that some of these tips have been good for you. Thank you, Peggy. Just as a quick summary, I know we've heard a lot of tips and tricks today from our panelists, but in, we can narrow it down to eight topics. And that's one, establish a routine for yourself. Make sure you know what you're doing every single day. You want to find your best work time and you want to stick to it. So we know that I work really late at night. Allison works really great in the afternoon. She is not a morning person. We're not going to try to do difficult things during those times. As Stacy said, it's really important to get up and move your body. Don't sit all day at your computer. Um, and then make time for your non-work related activities. So make sure you do get up and eat lunch, that you do walk your you know, get out and let your dogs out, that your children are fed. All of those are things that are very important. Um, establish a functional workspace. We heard that a lot today, that the space you're in can really determine how successful you are. And it's really important, like they said, to have a great comfortable chair. As Laura Lee said, use technology wisely. Make sure that what you're using is working for you and not against you. I think we've all been in Zoom calls. Even today, I struggled with Zoom and some of the technology available. And it's okay to struggle, just learn how to, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Peggy, maybe one of the most important skills I've learned from this is to always eat the frog first thing in the morning. I've started doing that since we started working on this presentation and I find my day to be way more productive after that. And finally, set realistic expectations. Um, I think Allison touched on this and that you can't do everything in one day, that it takes time and it takes a lot of effort to be successful over the days. So that's our summary of the top eight. Let's see here. I, a lot of people are saying um, that they love the good chair and the eat the frog tip. I love that. I do want to say thank you to our sponsor once again, First Merchants Bank. We're so thankful to have them here. I also want to say thank you, and I hope everyone will drop them a thank you in the comments to our presenters. This is, I always am so amazed with what you can come up with, um, and this group of panelists was really great to work with. I enjoyed every single day working with them. So please drop them a thank you in the comments um, so that we know that they're there. Let's see. And as we said, this is a recorded um, learning webinar. So we will put this up on our YouTube and we will send this out to the um, participants today. So you can share that with your friends and coworkers. Um, panelists, anything else you'd like to add? They're quiet now. They're all talked out. <laughs> 
thank you all for joining us. I know this was a quick session. Um, there are way more tips and tricks to working at home, but we hope that this helps you get started. And let's see, we have lots of people saying wonderful job to the ladies that people saw this on our Facebook and um, they're excited to see what our community is doing. So thank you to our panelists and to our sponsor. I hope to see everyone soon.